Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone, and praise God this morning. Let us pray. Eternal and all wise God, we come to you in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. God, to say thank you. We thank you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do, and we just give your name the honor, the praise, and the glory this morning. Now, God, do what you do best, and that's bless and keep. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen, amen. I going to come to you from the scriptures, um, but we're going to talk, as I was looking at the Bible this morning, and I was looking at, being as we're approaching Mother's Day, I, I went to the book of Ruth. But if I could use it as a sermon topic, I would say, take the bitterness out. Take the bitterness out. And I'm going to read Ruth chapter 1. And I'm going to um, come from chapter um, to verses 20 through 21. And it says, so the women went on until they came to Bethlehem. When they arrived at Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the women exclaimed, can this be Naomi? I'm sorry, I went to 19. So then it says, don't call me Naomi, she told them. Call me Mara. Because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me, and and the Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. And And as I said, take the bitterness out. One of the things that came to mind is that when stuff starts happening, we either blame the devil Satan, or we blame God. God, why did you let this happen to me? And Or Satan, or Satan is real busy in my life. Or, you know, simply won't blame everybody, daddy, and everybody. But God says sometimes, you know, life will happen. The Bible says that in John 3 and 16, 30, I've told you these things so that you may have peace. In this world, you, you will have trouble. But take heart, I am I have come overcome the world. So when God says he's overcome the world, then that means that even though things happen in our lives, it can, he has taken over. He's going to fix it. He can restore. When you look at the story of Ruth, the story of Naomi, Naomi lost her husband, and then she turned around and lost her two sons. And the women that were with her daughters-in-law that were left, those two, you know, she said, go back home. You can remarry. Go back home and, and, and check, check that out and get, it, get, your, get some new husbands. You're going to be all right. Well, Oprah said, okay, I'm going to go on. And she hugged her and loved her. Even though she cried, she loved her. She went on back home. But here you have Ruth and she says, no, I'm not going nowhere. I'm, what I'm going to do is follow where you go, I go. Where, um, where you, who you serve, I serve another one, that your God will be my God. And what happens here is when they get back to town, and she said, okay, come on with me. They get back into town, and Naomi is still angry, and so she focused her anger on God. And, but, and she says, and don't call me Naomi, because it, and the reason she said that it's because her name actually means, the word name, Naomi means good and pleasant, lovely, winsome. And some even say it means delight. And she said, I don't have no delight right now. And I'm definitely not pleasant. And I definitely don't feel lovely at this time because God had took everything from me. But call me bitter. Call me bitter because she said that because the word bitter actually means having a sharp, pungent taste or smell in their mouth. Uh, 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 It's not sweet. Anger, it it also means anger and hurt and resentful because of an experience. And sometimes, I cannot pause right there, the experience that we have in our life sometimes can cause us to be a little bit bitter. It, it can cause us to be angry when we've lost a loved one or and, and, and it hurts so much because they were so important to us. Ah, but 
it, it cannot just only because we lost somebody, we could have lost a job or we could have had some experience. Somebody could have hurt our feelings. And because they hurt our feelings, they turn you turn around and get angry at the situation. You're angry at the person. Ah, but I stopped by to tell somebody today that it's time to take the bitterness out. Ah, God says that he says he says that the Bible tells us again in John sixteen thirty three says, I have overcome the world. God has overcome the world. So when you have some bitterness and look to Jesus because he says he says, circle back to me. And remember that he overcame the world. It, it, that doesn't mean that you're not going to hurt for a little while, but it does mean that he's going to provide you some peace. He's going to restore your joy. He's going to do what he needs to do. Just remember who he is. Ah, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible also does tell us in Psalm 51, 10, to create in me a new heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit in me. Bitterness is never good to have to anyway, but and it does not allow for us to see the goodness of the Lord, and it does not allow us to see what He's about to do. It does not. It takes it takes over us, and it distracts us from what God has in store. Oh yes, yeah, some and when we have some experiences that we don't like, it tells us that it, it does not always mean that it's a bad thing. I'm not saying that someone's death is not bad, but I am saying this, that sometimes when we go through some experience we don't like and it leaves a bad taste in our mouth, it does mean that God has a plan for us. He, he did, Doesn't the Bible tell us that he knew us before we were in our mother's womb? And so because of that and the plan that he has, we have to look to him all the time. We say, okay, God, what am I supposed to learn out of this? What am I supposed to get out of this? Where am I supposed to go with this? And he said, first, you need to forgive. And then, and I can't pause there for me, not forgiving God, because God don't need no forgiveness. But for that person that you're angry with, that, that situation that you're angry, you got to forgive it. You got to let it go and take the bitterness out of it because there's some sweet undertones in it. I just stopped by to tell somebody this morning that God has some sweetness in it. He's going to provide you the sweetness that you need to overcome this. He, he says that there's joy, unspeakable joy, if you just let him do what he does. And, me, and he's meeting your needs. But take out the bitterness. You got to let some stuff go and watch the wonders of God. Uh, he does says he does signs, wonders, and miracles. We serve a miracle working God. We serve an amazing God. And because of that, you've got to be you. You've got to let it go. You see, when you have the bitterness, when you allow the bitterness to overtake us, it means that we have missed out and are not listening to the Holy Spirit. Mm. And can I that can I let you know that the Holy Spirit will guide you in the situation. The Holy Spirit will hold you in the middle of the night. The Holy Spirit will give you a newness and restore everything that he has for you. I, if we listen to the Holy Spirit. But in order to listen to him, we've got to have a relationship. So don't move. Don't go nowhere. Don't just stay put and stay still and allow the God to speak to you and through you. When he does that, then you will be able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, I, I tell you that he will give you what you stand in need of. And see what he did through the book in, in the Bible when, when Naomi had said she had lost everything. Through her daughter-in-law, he restored her. Through her daughter-in-law, all things came back new through her daughter-in-law. So God will use people to bring some re restoration. But you have to be open to it, but you can't be open to, open to it if you are not in tune to the Holy Spirit. I, if you go back to last Sunday when Pastor laid down on his face and he said, you got to get in a posture of hearing. You got to get a posture 
of learning. You got to have a posture to understand and plead the blood of Jesus to, to God and ask God, what is it that you want me to hear from you? What is it that you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, I'm open to it. That posture means that you get down on your knees or lay down on your face and hear from him. But it does mean that you have to be in that posture of learning, the posture of hearing from the Holy Spirit, the posture of knowing that only God can bring you out of this. Ah, create a new spirit in me and a pure, give me a pure heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit in me. I dare you to read Psalm 5110 again. And ask for an enlightenment. Because God will take it and give you what you need to say. Because he's going to pull the bitterness out from the root. And the reason you have to pull it out from the root is so that you don't go back to it again. Uh, forgive this means to really to let it go. You may not forgive, but it, your heart will change in that. The, and, and, when you get, and when you take out the bitterness and the sweetness starts to come, you can see what God is doing. Oh, the majesty of God is so amazing. When you think about all that you've done and God is all that he's done in your life, you can look back over your life and think things over and remember that he's good. Ah, when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I want you to think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you and your soul should shout hallelujah. Thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you, God, for restoring me. I can I dare you right now, tonight, today after we get off this call, to just start shouting and giving God the praise. Start shouting and giving God the glory. Start shouting because he will take it out. Because, you know, Satan does want to come to kill, steal, and destroy. But sometimes the bitterness causes a distraction from where God is having taken us. It's a distraction from where he has, has us to be. And because of those things, you will miss out on what God has for you. You will miss out on where he's taking you. And sometimes we'll miss out on the restoration because we're so busy, busy holding on to the bitterness, so busy hurting on to the hurt. But God doesn't do anything in a vacuum. He does not make mistakes. But he does give us all that we stand in need of. And so I ask you to trust him this morning. Trust all that he has. And I promise you that he will give you peace. He is the lily of the valley. <laughs> he is the bright and morning star. He is everything that you need. I dare you to start trusting him. I dare you to start giving him the praise. And watch what he does in your life. Father God, we thank you for this morning. We give your name the honor, the praise, and the glory. And God, we ask that as we're taking the bitterness out, that you restore the joy, restore the peace, and we give you the glory. Amen.